is the Big O Show. All righty, there he is. He's on the ice, Montreal and all. There you are. Everybody good? Everybody healthy? Everybody on the ice? Everybody uh, working out? The Panthers had an optional morning skate. Not everybody was on the ice, but uh, the assumption is everybody's good to go. Okay. All right. That's, uh, that, that is uh, amazing. And Bob, dude, first of all, let's talk about Bob. Because obviously the contract has been a, a thorn in the side, has been a, a point of reference for all of us and bitterness and all that. And not that he's, you know, living up to the responsibility of the contract, whatever. But he is playing like the goalie that we all wanted him to play, like the guy we saw in Columbus a few years ago. We're like, yeah, that's the guy. And that guy has shown up, dude. Big time. No, he's playing like the guy. That's the guy we signed. That's the guy we gave the big money to. Regardless of what you want to say about the contract itself, and it's still kind of dubious, but you signed him to be a difference maker, and holy shit, has he been a difference maker in these playoffs, especially lately? Um, I mean, there's a there's a reason the Panthers keep winning in overtime, and a, a big part of it is they got clutch players up front, and they also got Bob making saves. He had one save against Tara Vine in the second period Friday night that was just completely ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that, that, uh, the pad save that he had, that, that, that's, is that, you're talking about, was it the pad save? It was a blocker save. Yeah. On a, yeah. Pa on a pass across the ice. Yeah. Holy thing shit. of beauty. God, that thing was just absolutely amazing. And then, you know, we, we talked about this and I, I know people were like going crazy when I said, you got to trade Huberto and you got to go get yourself a star. Uh, you got to get a son of a bitch. And... You know, the best part about getting a son of a bitch, and we're watching with the heat. Um, when you get the son of a bitch, it trickles down to everybody else. And all of a sudden now, you know, Verhage showed you he was a dog last year because he was the one that really stepped up between Huberto Barkov and Verhage. It was Verhage that was stepping up. But you see Bennett and Reinhardt and Duclair and uh, who, uh, who else am I forgetting? Montour and... You know, uh, and and it starts all with Kachuk and Barkov too has played really well. That, that he had a big boy goal here mm -hmm. in this last game, dude. Um, but but for Kachuk to be throwing himself on the on the ice to block a shot, your mm -hmm. best player to do that, and then to get the game winner on both of these games here, uh, I I don't know what more to say about what Matthew Kachuk has meant. To this entire franchise. No, and to me, the way to sum it up, he's one of three finalists for the Hart Trophy, which is the NHL MVP for the regular season, and very, very, very deservedly so. And 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 here's the point I want to make too, though, because I, I and I see this with Jimmy Butler also, and this idea of like they're dogs and they're, and they're bringing it all that, and I'm totally on board with that. But can we please, please, please not forget the fact that they're not just dogs. They're great I mean, players. These guys are complete studs. Yeah. I mean, Jimmy yeah. Butler's got like a fabulous mid range, mid range yeah, game. Where basically, Jason Tatum, but Jason Tatum is, is a talent. But does he have the dog that Kachuk and, and have? That's, that's the difference. And I think that's why we're more impressed with that because we've seen James Harden. We know that the God, the Lord gave him an incredible ability to handle the ball and shoot and all that. But, bro, are you a dog? No, you're not. And so I think that that's why we talk so much about the dog because it's really the dog that makes the difference in the talent, whatever you are. If you're a role player that's a dog, you're, a better, you're better than a normal role player. If you're a superstar, which is what we kept talking about with Barkov and Hubie, like, bro, these are two passive guys. They're not. They're, they don't like to be in the spotlight. They don't like to be agitators. They don't. They don't like to be. You know, raw, raw guys, rattle cages, all that. Matthew Kachuk, Jimmy Butler, they fit all of that, and I think that's why we do that. Marino, the same thing. We love that attitude that that comes with the player. 
You know what I'm saying? And I think that that's why we elaborate and we, we lean on that dog stuff so much. And, and yeah, I, that's all fine and dandy. But what I'm saying is sometimes we tend to like overlook the fact like Jimmy Butler is just a great mid-range shooter. Yes. And, and he's a dog. Matthew Kachuk, I don't know if you noticed this, on his game-winning goal Friday night, not only did he find himself in the right place, but on his way to the net, he blocked the stick of a defenseman to prevent him from reaching out to his right to block the pass from Bennett to Reinhardt. I mean, that's very high hockey IQ. And the guy's got phenomenal hands. So, but, and so on top of that... Well, well, hey, dude, the dive... He anticipated where the play was going, yeah. so he threw his body there. I mean, <laughs> no, no, he's got both, and right. Jimmy Butler has both. Also, they're both high-quality dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think it's you know, Alonzo Mourning was like that. It's just I think it's it, we we as fans, Michael Jordan was freaking ruthless. Kobe, you know what Kobe I mean? He's the same kind of guy. Yeah, Larry Bird, same thing. I, I just think these are things that we, we gravitate to because we know that, okay, you're, you're talented. But then when you see what you're willing to do to win, you know, that, that's right. the kind of shit that just – and that's why I tweeted out, if any South Florida fan is wondering, you know, I want to get a new jersey from one of the teams. Which one should I get? Matthew Kachuk is definitely one of those that you should be thinking of because, man, that is how you want to be represented. And then, by the way, the Matthew Kachuk effect, I think, has been very positive for, for Barkov more than anybody else because it's really allowed Barkov to be Barkov. And then all these other guys, the Bennetts and the Reinhardt and the, and the Duclairs and the Montours and the Verhages, they get to go and, and be the kennel. They, get, they all get to be the dogs around, you know, the stud of Barkov. And Barkov obviously does all the dirty stuff, winning the uh, face-offs, obviously scoring goals and setting people up, but it kind of takes that spotlight away from him and all these other guys get to do a lot of that dirty stuff and really, uh, you know, elevate the team. No, and that that's a fair point. And Barkov's always been a great two-way player, even in the playoffs what has been missing is the ability to carry a series and maybe they'll never have, but he doesn't have to carry a series right now. And right. part of it is because they're getting a lot of complimentary stuff. You want to talk about dogs, not on the level of Kachuk in terms of ability. Sam Bennett is a dog too. Yeah, man. He is, he is one of those. He is a badass. Uh, and then Montour is a guy who's like, might as well might run marathons. I was making the point today, just when a fellow writer here, he played like 55 minutes the other night. And the dudes, I've never seen him come to the bench where he's even remotely sucking wind. And you see guys come to the bench. I mean, they, they've just skated hard, so they're a little bit winded and all that. This dude is like, conditioning's amazing. Uh, and he's a high-end, highly skilled player. So Yeah, no, Listerine, no, Listerine Lundell. They got some guys, man. They just, they got guys all over that team. Yeah. Can, now, but can you explain? Because, like, the Heat and the Panthers – it's hard to explain this shit, too, bro. That's no, the it's other. Not, no, it's, no, it's not. It's not it's hard to explain at all. I will do it very quickly. Want to do it very quickly? Please. Number one, I would make the argument that the Heat massively un underachieved in, in the regular season, that this is, more, this is more of the type of Heat team that there was, and that there was such a thing as regular season Jimmy and playoff Jimmy. That's for the Heat. For the Panthers, this is just further proof, and part of why the Stanley Cup playoffs are the best playoffs by far, is the margin between their losing. I mean, if Pittsburgh doesn't, excuse my language, doesn't shit the bed late in the regular season against Chicago, which was basically playing to get the most lottery chances, Panthers don't even make the playoffs. If Brad Marchand scores in, in, in the final seconds of game five in Boston, Panthers are done three weeks ago. The margin in the NHL is microscopic. Uh, and then the Panthers were, and Paul Maurice made that point. You get into the playoffs in the NHL with 16 teams, pretty much all those 16 teams, the difference between top and bottom is really not that great. So it comes down to who's willing to pay the price, who's got some injury luck, puck bounces the right way, hot goaltender, and then the Panthers have gotten all of that. Yeah, yeah, the difference between this and 96, we got scores now, bro. 
we got scores now. Back in the day, you were hoping to get one goal, and then bees are on his head, and you're hoping to keep everybody out and win a yep. one nothing, two one game, maybe at best. You knew if it got to three, four goals, we were done in those we're days. Uh, nowadays, that's the difference, dude. They can get dirty, they can stop you, and they can score. And and by the way, what you're telling me too is that this is not just a run here at the end of the year. This is a sign of things to come now for the for this team. Oh, without I mean, without question. And this isn't to say that they're going to cruise. Hell, they might they might even be in a battle just to make the playoffs last year because there are a lot of good teams. But right. they have now established the fact that before they were kind of a semi-soft team. That's done. Now, whenever they get in the playoffs, they're going to be a bitch to get out. And the, the other major difference between now and 96, we got to the 96 final. And if we were being honest with ourselves and we were looking the other side and looking at Colorado, it was like, uh-oh, this, this could be ugly. Now, whether they play Dallas or Vegas in the final, assuming they get past Carolina, we just say they can't win. Right. I'm with you there. All right, on the Dolphins side, I know you're uh, you're you're at the more important uh, pra- practice right now uh, with the Panthers. But uh, I saw Cam Wolf reporting that uh, Van Ginkle is going to be moved inside now uh, in this scheme because they're pretty comfortable with the outside guys. Your thoughts on that transition? By the way, let me let me before I answer, I am here. Uh, also because the media is not allowed at, at the OTA today. The, we, we are allowed tomorrow, and oh, okay. Omar, Omar and I will be there. So, uh, okay. no, I like the, anything that gets Van Ginkle on the field more, I'm on board because it's not a big secret. I'm a big Van Ginkle guy, number one. Number two, it just gives you more depth at a position that was kind of lacking depth. Because um, right now we're looking at Jerome Baker, David Long Jr., Duke Riley, Channing Tindall, if he pans out in the second year. I love adding Van Ginkle to the mix. This tells me also if you're moving Van Ginkle inside, he's another veteran edge defender on the way in at some point late in the process. Maybe you're bringing back Melvin Ingram. Maybe you're bringing back Trey Flowers. Justin Houston still out there. Um, there's another name. Oh, escapes me right now. There's another prominent high-profile guy who's still without a team. Just to say they don't bring one of those guys again later in the process doesn't have to be now. Um, so no, I, li- I like the move. Yeah, I'm I'm with you there. And by the way, with Van Ginkle, John, you got the picture there. Can you uh, whip it out again? Excuse me while I whip this out. Uh, with Van Ginkle going to the middle, the big Wisconsin shoulder pads are going to come back, right? I would imagine. You remember Van Ginkle in Wisconsin? No, yeah, he wore yes. like a really weird number. Did he wear like seventeen or something? No, that was well, not only that. But he wore the big thick pads too at the same oh, he time. Did? Yeah, yeah. He always he. I th- at one point I think I saw him with a neck brace and everything. Uh, like I never uh, saw like, that picture. Like like well like the class. I think he wore one, but I know. See, he's go. got he's got seventeen. The seventeen. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's right. He did wear a weird number, but but so. Now in the middle, uh, I think I think he's going to have to uh, unretire those big Wisconsin pads and bring them back now. Yep. No, I, I like I like the move. I, uh, and if he if he lines up on the outside, then I mean, he, maybe he gets buried and gets very little playing time again. I'm all for get him on the field. I'm with you there. All right. Uh, follow him on Twitter at Blue Park NFL and uh, catch his work there at AllDolphins.com or. NHL.com, right? NHL.com, right? That's where they can catch your work. Yep, I will have the game recap tonight. There you go. The game recap tonight. Uh, Alan, as always, thank you, my brother. We'll catch up later on in the week, my friend. Thank you. Sounds good. You'll be good. You got it. There you go. Alan Poopart, baby. Getting it done. Love it. That's our EJDconstruction.com, my Emmett Dolphins report. If you need a, I'm talking about like custom home construction and major home remodeling, not a handyman. You call Eric right now, give you the owner's personal cell number, 305-433-4843. You want to modernize that kitchen. You need to upgrade something in your home. You want a new room. Uh, You know, one of our listeners, unfortunately, had a fire. They had to remediate the entire home, so they had to gut it out. They do that, too. 
you name it, they do it, man. Custom home construction, major home remodeling, and fully insured. So everybody that walks onto your property, if they get injured, they will not sue you. Remember, even if you don't hire EJDconstruction.com and you hire somebody else, please, I beg you, before you allow them to make, to do anything on your property, have them prove to you that they are fully insured. If they are not fully insured, do not allow them on your property. Okay? Because you can get sued then. Don't open yourself up to a lawsuit. Then you're calling Welton Realm. We don't want you to do that. EJDconstruction.com, 305-433-4843. This is the big old show.